this is Jeff Dollar. I'm the pastor of the Community Bible Church in Portage, Pennsylvania. I'm also an elder in the Evangelical Methodist Church, which is centered in Kingsport, Tennessee. And the question arises, should one, upon leaving the United Methodist Church, join the Global Methodist Church? Let me say first of, of all that I am very glad to see that uh, such a church is being formed, that, that there are people leaving the apostasy of the United Methodist Church and the blatant sin which is being promoted there, and joining another denomination that's concerned about maintaining a biblical worship and holiness and, and so on that in, in the Wesleyan tradition. However, there is an issue I think that needs to be addressed, and that is uh, something I don't think it will be easily addressed, and I don't know if it can be addressed. Uh, that is that the camel of homosexual behavior and immorality may have been pushed out of the tent when it comes to the Global Methodist Church and for the forming of the Global Methodist Church. But at the same time, the nose of the camel has been left in the door of the tent. Now you've perhaps heard the old saying, you can't let the nose of the camel there, eventually it's going to force itself in. Well, uh, they, I believe, in the Global Methodists have been able to remove the issue of homosexuality, at least for the time being, in forming this new group. But they've left the nose in the tent. And that nose in the tent is female leadership in the church, the pastorate, eldership, bishops, and so forth. Looking at the scripture, it says, Let your women keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but they are to be submissive, as the law also says. And if they want to learn something, let them ask their own husbands at home, for it is shameful for a woman to speak in the church. But what do we mean by that? Does that mean that when women come in, they are to be treated as second-class citizens? Uh, are they to be completely silent, not permitted to speak whatsoever in the church? And then whenever church is over, they can speak out in the parking lot with, their, with others. If they have a question, they must ask their husband. And that's not what it's talking about. What this is dealing with is order within the church. Uh, the Corinthian church, as you probably know, is a church which was filled with disorder and chaos. You had the abuse of tongues. You had schismatic uh, things going on between Paul and Apollos and Barnabas and so forth. Uh, you had immorality in the church uh, where you had the, the need of church discipline. And uh, Paul finally says at the end of this chapter, he said, let all things be done decently and in order. The church was out of order. Now, one, one, one aspect the church was out of order was in the area of female leadership. Now, uh, people will say, well, that was just a cultural issue of that day. I, I don't think so, folks. Look at the scriptures. You go back to the Old Testament. You go back throughout the New Testament. You find that in the priesthood uh, that was established by the Lord for the children of Israel, uh, that there was male leadership there. There was male leadership in, with uh, the, the Levites, the teachers. The New Testament was no different when it came to the apostles and the bishops. All They were all men. Uh, whenever you, it comes to the actual writing of the Bible, the Bible was written by men. And what, why is that? Uh, it's because that's, that's what God, God had called to do. Uh, we are involved in a battle, folks, when it comes to the idea of facing the world and uh, going to war with Satan and the principalities and powers of, of the age. And I, I believe that God had called men to do so. And so that being the case, and with this, this command here, uh, that a woman is not to, to take a role of authority within the church or to be teaching in the church, to do so is to try to work around this scripture. Now, this not is not a culturally popular position to take. You know, with, with, with that being the case, it's an easy thing to go with the flow of the culture and say, well, that's something that was cultural in Paul's day, but it's not effective today. Folks, whenever you look at the denominations, the mainline denominations, one of the first things that led them to apostasy was the idea of opening up the leadership for women, women pastors and, and uh, elders and so forth. Uh, that is because it is something that is against the, the will of God. God has, has plainly given this within the scripture. Also, also Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 2 says basically the same thing. Now Timothy is a young pastor that's being instructed by Paul and he is given the instruction here in verse 11 of chapter 2. Let a woman learn in silence with all submission and I do not permit a woman to teach 
or to have authority over a man but to be in silence. For Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman, being deceived, fell into transgression. Well, what does that mean? Well, there was a certain amount of deception which was required for Satan to bring about the fall. Satan decided, rather than approaching Adam directly, he went to Eve. And through Eve, he was able to deceive Eve, and then Eve then convinced her husband to take of the fruit. And of course, then we have the fall of man. Now, this is given as a reason why that women are not to teach in the church or to have authority in the church. Now, the men and women are, are different. Uh, they are designed differently, both physically and emotionally. Now, uh, before God, we're all equal, obviously. There's neither male nor female, slave or, or um, uh, free, bond or free. Uh, so we are, are uh, before God, spiritually the same, but in, within the structure of the church, the maintaining of order within the church. Uh, Paul, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, in two places in the, in the New Testament, says that a woman is not to teach. I've heard some arguments against this interpretation, but once again, this is an interpretation which is held for hundreds and hundreds of years until the social pressure was put on some weak people within the church and they caved and gave in and permitted women to teach. And the result has been, as predicted here, uh, Satan has got the upper hand within these churches. And it will be so also within the global Methodist church in time. They have pushed the camel of immorality out of the church, but the nose is still in, and that nose here is female leadership. Now, uh, I don't think that anything will, will be able to be done as far as correcting that within the global Methodist church, but uh, if you're of the mindset that uh, it is biblically wrong to have women in, le in leadership and teaching and preaching in the church, women pastors and elders and so forth, uh, then you may want to reconsider leaving the UM to go into the Global Methodist. The Global Methodist is a step in the right direction, I would agree. And I believe that we'll be blessed by the Lord despite some of these differences. Yet at the same time, I think that it's only a matter of time before the same issues crop up again because you have to cut off the head of the snake uh, or uh, things are, are going to be going back the way that they were. Uh, you are buying some time and you uh, perhaps we'll be able uh, to function for a while uh, in a more biblical fashion uh, without the burden of the blatant immorality that is being promoted within the United Methodist Church. And I'm very glad to see people leaving that. At the same time, though, I think that perhaps you need to go a step further. Uh, whenever people look at this and they say, well, that's just cultural, the same arguments are being made against the idea of homosexuality being sin. I mean, you have to admit that. They'll say, well, that's, Paul was looking at that differently. Paul didn't know about committed relationships and so on and so forth, uh, rather than looking at what the scriptures actually say. Now, the same arguments are used here against the idea of women teaching. So there's an inconsistency involved, and that inconsistency always eventually leads uh, to a falling away of the faith. It may take years. It may take a few generations. Uh, but it, it does eventually happen. So the only way to maintain it is, is to stay firm in proper interpretation of the scripture, not interpreting the scriptures in light of the culture, but uh, according to hermeneutical principles. Uh, so that being the case, just to something to consider. Uh, now, some, some folks, you're, you're set in your ways on this, and if, if you feel that's the best for you, then by all means, at least leave the United Methodist Church. As I said, it is a step in the right direction. Uh, but if, if not, then you might want to consider uh, going independent or contacting the Evangelical Methodist Church. Uh, my email is at uh, the end of this video, and I will forward the information uh, to one of the district superintendents or general superintendents uh, to see if that is something that would be compatible with your situation. Uh, once again, thank you for your time. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them, put them in the comments section, or email me. Uh, thanks for your time.